Controversial opinions. Nitro is the best B&M hyper in the US. The B&M hyper is probably one of the most, if not the most, well-respected coaster models out there. They're all considered really good rides by most, and everyone seems to love them. Yes, for once, the GP and enthusiasts can agree on something. But they're also really hard to rank, and that's because of one thing. They're all kind of the same. There's only really one or two distinguishing features between them that makes them unique. Besides Raging Bull, but we, we don't talk about that one. As a result of this, B&M Hypers aren't something that people usually rank from best to worst like other models like RMC Hybrids or even Intamin Hypers, but there is a general consensus on what are the best in the US and what are the worst. And for the most part, I'd agree about what people say about these rides. However, there is one Hyper that I think is criminally underrated and it's the topic of this video. That ride is Nitro. I think Nitro is better than every single other B&M Hyper in the US. Yes, including Goliath, Diamondback, and even Mako. So in this video, I'm going to do my best to prove why. First, I just want to say I haven't ridden any of these in the top three I'm going to be talking about, but I have ridden Candemonium, which has a lot of similar elements to those of Diamondback and Mako, so I can sort of piece together what those rides would be like. Goliath, though, is Goliath's just a breed of its own, so that's kind of a wild card, but I think it does look like the weakest of the three, so it's alright. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be mostly talking about Mako versus Nitro, because Mako is widely considered the best, or at least the second best in the US. Now, I can't argue with Shambhala, because quite frankly, that, that looks miles better than anything in the US. However, I think Nitro is better than everything else out there. First, there are three things I want to mention about Nitro that I think people overlook. It has nothing to do with ride layout, but it's just things I want to mention because I don't think people talk about these things when talking about Nitro. The first thing is that this is one of the bigger B&M Hypers. Now, when I first saw this thing, I was shocked at how big this is. There are a lot of big rides at Great Adventure, but this one definitely stands out from the rest. This ride is really big, guys. It's 230 feet, making it one of the bigger B&M Hypers in the US. It also has a really big drop at 215 feet. That's bigger than Mako's 200 foot drop and Goliath's 175 foot drop. Don't even talk to me. Another thing I want to mention is the lack of trim brakes. There is not a single hill that is trimmed on this ride, and it's something that you don't notice how nice it is until there are trims. Like seriously, I forgot how good it is to have a trimless B&M Hyper until I rode Candemonium and got murdered by the trims. And now I can't go back. Lastly, this is a minor one, but I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, Nitro doesn't have seat belts. Some of the newer B&M Hypers and even the newer B&M Gigas are starting to have these weird retractable seat belts. They're not horrible, but it's definitely better if they're not there and they're not on Nitro. I don't know if Mako or Diamondback or Goliath has them, but I think it's worth mentioning that Nitro doesn't. Okay, so let's start comparing Nitro and Mako. If you look at both their layouts, you'll notice they're actually pretty similar. They both go into a left-hand turn right after the first drop. They both go into one big airtime hill, then a turnaround. Then one smaller airtime hill that's not as strong as the first one, but Mako's has a trim on it and Nitro's doesn't. So that's just something I want to point out. But then this is where they differ a little. Nitro goes into a turn into a double helix and Mako goes into a speed hill into the mid course. Now this is really just personal preference. If you really like speed hills, then you may prefer Mako to Nitro just because of the speed hill. But personally, the one in Candemonium was all right. It was fine. It didn't take my breath away, but Nitro's double helix kind of did. I've graded out on Nitro's double helix more times than I'm ready to admit. It's a really strong double helix, not just something that's thrown in there as a gimmick to burn off speed. I'm looking at you. So now Mako and Nitro both slam into the mid course. Now Nitro has a really good pop of floater in the back off the brakes, but Mako, Mako has a curve drop off the brakes, which leads me to believe that it's not a good of drop as Nitro's. Now this is where Mako kind of dies. Mako's last portion is just a bunch of slow overbanks into the final brake run. Nitro on the other hand has an abundance of small to medium sized airtime hills at the end that provide pretty good floater to even some lifter in the back row. I don't care what you say, this is the better finale. So overall, I'd say I prefer Nitro's layout to Mako. People really just get caught up in the five second floater hill that they forget how mediocre the rest of the ride layout is. But yes, the five second floater hill on Mako is better executed than Nitro's first big camelback. Nitro's first big camelback is good, but it doesn't compare to Mako or Candemonium's five second floater hill. But like I said, Nitro's layout is better in pretty much every single other way. So unless you really like that five second floater hill and you really cannot live without that speed hill, I just can't see how you could argue that Mako has the better layout than Nitro. Mako is definitely more visually appealing though. Its perfect L-shaped layout and great color scheme over the lake is definitely easier on the eyes than Nitro's ugly color scheme and sideways T layout. 
But if we're speaking about that layout, I think Nitro is better. So why is Nitro so underrated then? Why do people just normally overlook this hyper when it's the best in the US? Well, I think there's two reasons. The first and more obvious one is that El Toro is kind of in the same park. If you really want great airtime, you can just go over to El Toro. And with El Toro's oddly hyper-like layout, it can be easy to just forget about Nitro. The other reason though is Nitro's name and theme, or rather, lack thereof. Say what you will if you don't value theming, but theming, or at least a good ride theme and name, can really leave an impression in your mind. It can help you remember the ride better if there's a good theme and color scheme to go with it. Nitro has no theme, a generic name, and one of the ugliest color schemes to date. Like seriously Six Flags, what were you thinking with this? So it's easy to just forget about Nitro when talking about the B&M Hypers, but it's not a forgettable ride experience. The ride itself is considered to be a mid to upper tier B&M Hyper by many, but I just don't think it gets talked about enough. There's a lot of factors that make it, in my opinion, the best in the US, the layout being probably the biggest of them. This ride is really great, guys. Don't skip out on it if you're going to Great Adventure. Also, try it in different rows. Yes, I know the default place to ride a B&M Hyper is the back row, but I also really like Nitro in the front. You're gonna be sacrificing the big first drop, but you're gonna get a smoother ride experience and stronger airtime on the bigger hills. Since the bigger hills have no trims, you really can get good airtime no matter what, but I think it's a little bit stronger in the front. The smaller hills at the end though are better in the back, but everything else is pretty much better in the front, so I implore you to try both. And the last thing I wanna to touch on, because I know people are gonna mention this, is the rattle. Yes, in the back seat, Nitro has a slight rattle on the pullout from the drop, but that's it. That's the only spot in this ride where I felt any rattle. So if there's a slight rattle on one row, on one part of the ride, is the ride really rough or are people just being dramatic? Plus, there are a lot of other great B&Ms that have a rattle comparable to Nitro's or even worse. Heck, one of the other top B&M hypers does. But I know that some people still aren't to agree with me and that's fine. This is kind of a tough pill to swallow, but that pill is just my opinion. So I'm not saying it's the fact, but I'm just saying that's what I believe. But tell me in the comments what you think. Maybe I didn't convince you that Nitro's the best, but hopefully I gave you a slightly better outlook on the coaster. If I did, then let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, then subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Coast Tunes, and I'm signing off. Bye, guys.